Okay, our lesson is all about inductive and deductive reasoning. This is taken from module 4, lesson 1. Let's have the definition for inductive and deductive reasoning. The first one is the inductive reasoning. Inductive and deductive reasoning are two fundamental forms of reasoning for mathematics. Inductive reasoning is a process that uses our knowledge in making a general inference about unfamiliar occurrence based on observation and patterns. So we use observation and patterns for us to have inductive reasoning. This is a reasoning that uses specific examples to make a general rule. So it's, it gives us a specific example for us to create a general rule. The conclusion formed by using inductive reasoning is often called a conjecture since it may or may not be correct. Let's have this as our example. Use the inductive reasoning to find the next terms. Letter A, we have A, C, F, and then next three terms which are vacant. We have here the clues. Looking at the different term in the given sequence, notice that between A and C is B, which is one letter got omitted. So from A to C, there is a letter in between which is C. Next, C and F, in, in between the letters are two other letters, D and E. And the next letter should be from F and the next number by omitting three letters in between. So we have here our English alphabet up to you. A, B, C. We have B as our vacant term there. D, E, F. For us to get F, we have two vacant letters there. So from F, what would be our next letter? So we remove one letter here, which is B. Then we remove D and E which are two letters. So we are going to remove three letters, G, H, I, for us to get J. After removing three letters, we are going to remove four letters, K, L, M, N. So our next letter should be O. From O, we remove five letters. We have P, Q, R, S, T for us to get our letter U. So we have J as our fourth letter, O as our fifth letter, and then U as the sixth letter. Letter B is A6, C12, E18, and two vacant terms. So we have here the different clues. Alternate letters and numbers. A, 6, C, 12, E, 18. The letters are those that are in odd position in the alphabet. So we have the letters A, C, and E. And then the numbers are multiples of 6. 6, 12, 18. So we have here the different letters. Analyzing this, A in between is B. So we have C. We remove D for us to get E. So if we are going to remove F, our next letter. If we are going to remove F, our next letter should be G. Next, six, twelve, eighteen. Next multiple of 6 is 24. So therefore, our vacant terms are G and 24. Another example, consider the following procedure. 
pick a number, you are going to pick any number from your mind. Then, multiply the number by 8. So, 3. If I'm going to choose 3, we have 3 times 8, 24. Add 6 to the product. So, 24 plus 6, we have 30. Divide the sum by 3. So, 30 divided by 3 is 10. Then, subtract 5. So, subtract 5. So, 10 minus 5 is 5. If you're going to do that with all the numbers here, you can get your own answer. Next one, a counterexample is an example that contradicts the assumptions and shows that a statement is false. So we are going to use a counterexample for us to prove that a given statement is false. Number one, every number that is multiple of 10 is divisible by 4. So what are the different numbers that are multiple of 10? We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Then it must be divisible by 4 according to the statement. So list some multiples of 10. We have 20, 30, 40, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, so 70. Now, we divide the number into 4. The answer should be a whole number. 20 divided by 4, 5, which is a whole number. So, it's yes. 30 divided by 4, it's 7.5, which is a decimal. Therefore, no. 40 divided by 4, that is 10. So, that's yes. 50 divided by 4, is 12.5 so that is no 60 divided by 4 15 so that is yes 70 divided by 4 that is a decimal so therefore the answer is no since 30 50 and 70 is a multiple of 10 but not divisible by 4 we call these numbers as counter examples next one all prime numbers are odd. So we have 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Okay, so we are going to look at this. If these are, this will give us a true statement. So 2 is a prime number, but this is not an odd number. So it's a no. 3 is a prime number, at the same time, an odd number. So it's a yes. For number 5, 5 is a prime number, and at the same time, it's an odd number. So this should be yes. For 7, 7 is a prime number, at the same time, it's odd number. We have, we have yes. For 9, 9 is an odd number, but it is not a prime number. So this should be no. I'm sorry. So this should be no. For 11, 11 is a prime number and 11 is an odd number. So that is yes. So therefore, 2 and 9 violates the statement. Since 2 and is a prime number but not an odd number, we call this 2 number as a counter example. Inductive and deductive reasoning, we proceed then to the deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is the process by which conclusions are made based on previously known facts or by employing general assumptions, procedures, or principles. It is applying a general rule to specific examples. And deductive reasoning involves making a logical argument from agreed assumptions and proven facts and there is a need to justify every step with a reason. So there should be a justification in every step. For example, use deductive reasoning to show that when a number is multiplied by 10, 
the product is decreased by 8. The difference is divided by 2 and 4 is added to quotient. Then the number is 5 times the original number. So we have there the different conditions that we are going to show. Such as, let x be the original number. Then, a number multiplied by 10. Next one is the product is decreased by 8. Next one is the difference is divisible by 2. Then, 4 is added to quotient. 4 is added to quotient. So, if we are going to apply all of this, the answer should be 5 times the original number. So, what is our original number? Our original number is x. So, 5 times the original number, our answer should be 5x. So, let's prove that one. Let x be the original number. So, that is x. A number is multiplied by 10. So, 10 times x, 10x. The product is decreased by 8. So, 10x minus 8, we have 10x minus 8. The difference is divided by 2. So, 10x minus 8 divided by 2. So, in lowest term, if we are going to reduce this one, we can get 5x minus 4. 4 added to quotient. So, 5x minus 4 from this, then add 4 plus 4. Minus 4 plus 4 will be 0. So, therefore, the answer is 5x. So, if the answer is 5x, we can now have the given conclusion. Since from the original number x, we got 5x, the statement, therefore, is proven. Because we are proving that the number is 5 times the original number, which is 5x. Next example, logic puzzles can be solved by deductive reasoning, a chart that enables us to display the given information in a visual manner helps in the solution. We have here example, each of four neighbors, Mark, Zen, Linda, and Roy has a different occupation. Their occupations are teacher, banker, chef, or broke, but we do not know who is the teacher, who is the banker, who is the chef, and of course, who is the broker. So from the following clues, determine the occupation of each neighbor. So we have these clues. First one, Zen gets home from work after the banker but before the broker. Second one, Linda, who is the last to get home from work, is not the teacher. Third one, the broker and Linda leave for work at the same time. So they leave at work at the same time. Next one is, the banker lives next door to Roy. So the banker lives next door to Roy. So having this, using the different clues, let's go first from clue 1. Zen gets home from work after the banker but before the broker. So from this one, we can now say that Zen is not the banker. Okay, so we put X. And then, Zen also is not the broker. So we put X there. So we have two choices for Zen. She may be the teacher or the chef. That's all for Clue number one. We go now then to clue number two. Linda, who is the last to get home from work, is not the teacher. Meaning, Linda is not the teacher. Okay, so Linda is not the teacher. We know from clue one that the banker is not the last to get home. And we know from clue two that Linda is the last to get home. So, meaning, Linda also is not the banker. 
Okay? Next one, we have the different clues. We go then to clue 3. The broker and Linda leave for work at the same time. So, Linda and the broker leaves for work at the same time. So, meaning Linda is not the broker. So, we can uh, put X mark there. Okay, so from here, we can have a conclusion that Linda is the chef. Okay, since Linda is the chef, Zen is not the chef, Mark is not the chef, Roy is not the chef. Okay, so we stop again there. Next, we have the different clues again if they are not the chef. So what would be our next clue? So from here, we can say that Zen is the teacher. Zen is the teacher. Why? Because she's not the banker. She, she's not the chef. She's not the broker. So she is the teacher. If she is the teacher, of course, Mark is not the teacher. Roy is not the teacher. Okay. Next clue, the banker lives next door to Roy. So, the banker lives next door to Roy. So, Roy is not the banker. So, we can put X for the banker. Therefore, Roy then is the broker. So, if Roy is the broker, Mark is not the broker. Therefore, Mark is the Banker. So from that one, using the different clues given, clue 1, 2, 3, and 4, we determine then that Mark is the banker, Zen is the teacher, Linda is the chef, and Roy is the broker.